Interpreting bloodstains left at a crime scene in order to reconstruct past events is known as bloodstain pattern analysis. This can help investigators to identify the scene as either a homicide, suicide or an accident, as well as pinpointing areas of the scene that are likely to contain the offender's DNA. Although bloodstain analysis is often portrayed in films and TV shows like CSI or Dexter, it is an incredibly complicated science that has a long history. The first scientific study on blood spatter was conducted in Poland in 1895 by a doctor named Edward Piotrowski. His controversial practices involve battering small animals like rabbits, using rocks and other instruments, while varying the angle and position of attack to see how the shape and pattern of the blood stains differed. Although this would never be allowed today, his studies increased the prevalence of blood stain analysis. With the development of technology and a better understanding of blood stains, crime scene investigators today can decipher the kind of weapon that was used, how and where the final blow was delivered, the likely extent of blood staining on the murderer's clothes, whether the murderer themselves bled too, whether the victim was moved post-mortem, or if the victim moved themselves before dying. Blood can leave the body in multiple different ways depending on the type of wound. It can gush, flow, drip, spurt or ooze. And apart from those with haemophilia, after a while blood will dry out and solidify, becoming darker and shinier in appearance. When droplets of blood come into contact with a surface, the shape of the stain can change depending on the angle of impact, velocity, distance travelled and the type of surface impacted. Blood stains are often separated into three different categories. The first is passive stains. These typically occur from gravity acting on the injured person and appear as drops, flows and pools of blood. The second category is transfer stains. These appear from contact with an existing blood stain and are referred to as wipes, swipes and pattern transfers. For example, a bloody footprint, blood-stained clothing or smeared blood from dragging a body. The final category is impact stains. These spatters, gushes or splashes of blood can travel quite a large distance through the air until they make contact with a surface. Cast-off blood stains also fit into this category and occur when an object that is wet with blood is swung or moved with high velocity and will leave drip trails in the surrounding area. Blood stain pattern analysis is a highly skilled science which requires detailed knowledge of physics and mathematics. By measuring the width and length of the blood stain, the angle of impact can be calculated which helps investigators determine the actions that may have taken place at the scene. Once the surface and the angle of impact have been identified, crime scene investigators will often use the string method, which is one of the oldest techniques of blood stain pattern analysis. By placing a protractor at the location of the blood stain and projecting strings at the angle of impact in the direction of the area of convergence, it will begin to show the general origin of impact. The first case that highlighted the importance of using blood pattern analysis in criminal trials occurred in 1954 in the USA. Dr Samuel Shepard, a prominent neurosurgeon, and his wife Marilyn Shepard were in their lakefront home in Bay Village, Ohio. In the middle of the night, Marilyn was bludgeoned to death in her bed with an unknown object. According to Dr Shepard, he was asleep downstairs when he awoke to the sound of her screams and as he ran upstairs he was knocked unconscious by an intruder whom Dr Shepard described as being bushy-haired. When police arrived at the house, they noticed that the crime scene was extremely bloody and investigators began to hone in on Dr Shepard as a suspect when they discovered the state the house was in and believed he may have staged it to look like a robbery had occurred. Dr Shepard was eventually convicted of second-degree murder for the death of his wife, but his conviction was overturned by the US Supreme Court in 1966. At the retrial later the same year, Dr Shepard's defence team utilised the expertise of Dr Paul Kirk, a biochemistry professor and forensic scientist at the University of California, Berkeley. 
he analysed the bloodstains left in the shepherd's bedroom and concluded that Dr Shepherd could not have been the one who murdered his wife. He testified that the blood appeared to radiate out from where Marilyn's head would have been and suggested that the killer was left-handed, whereas Dr Shepherd was right-handed. He also highlighted that the only blood stain apparent on Dr Shepherd's clothes was found on one knee of his trousers. This was not consistent with Dr Kirk's assertion that the killer would have had a reasonable amount of blood on their clothes due to the force of the blows. The most likely instrument the killer would have used was a flashlight, according to Dr Kirk, which was not what the prosecution had argued. The jury eventually acquitted Dr Shepherd, and after spending 11 years in prison, he was finally a free man. Jurors reported that the testimony about the blood stain pattern analysis was an integral part of their decision, and this case highlighted the importance of blood stain pattern analysis in criminal trials. However, as blood stain analysis is rooted in pattern recognition rather than comparison, it is viewed as having more freedom of interpretation compared to other forensic sciences such as fingerprinting. This element of ambiguity can become a problem as it allows for bias to potentially influence the analyst's conclusions about what occurred at a crime scene. Forensic confirmation bias is a particular form of cognitive bias where an individual's motives and beliefs can affect the way they analyse a crime scene and collect evidence, and can lead investigators to search for evidence that will support their pre-established ideas of what took place. While viewing the scene as a whole is important to determine where blood has been deposited, this also makes it possible that the analyst will see other extraneous evidence such as weapons or deceased individuals that are not necessary for simply analysing the bloodstains. This can lead to contextual bias affecting the conclusions drawn by the analyst and therefore limits the reliability of their conclusions. An American report published in 2009 stated that, in general, the opinions of bloodstain pattern analysis are more subjective than scientific, and that extra care must be given to the way in which the analysis is presented in court. This is because experts hired by both the prosecution and the defence can study bloodstains left at a crime scene and come to extremely different conclusions about what occurred, despite both using proper methods and established procedures. This brings into question not only the reliability of their conclusions, but also whether the bloodstain pattern analysis holds any value as evidence in a criminal trial.